I never imagined recording an album like Shades of Love. Bossa Nova is a totally new direction for me. When I first heard Antonio Carlo Jobim, I was just swept away. I felt his soul through his music. And through Bossa Nova came new ways to see and feel and receive love. I had to make this album. Don't fight the moon, the stars above, and don't fight me. Get as close as I can, socially distance. <laughs> and here we are, the beginning of Shades of Love. Marker. It happened through a series of sort of magical events. Oh, she's old enough to be. My rock and roll career finished. And I lost my record deal. I actually lost my home. Um, I completely wiped out. I remember the moment I felt like this isn't me anymore. And the only thing I could think of was I wanted to go out and walk by the ocean in Malibu. And I began this journey which was in a way all about the magic of the feminine because rock and roll was a very masculine world. It was, you know, it was black leather and um, I came to the end of that journey. Mother Ocean be praised. And I wanted to sing some very romantic songs to my boyfriend that um, his father had always sung to his mother. And so uh, I hired a jazz pianist and that's where I started to sing jazz. And um, later on I studied bossa nova with an amazing uh, Brazilian guitarist and ran into my uh, producer Mugi Carnazio. And Mugi was, if you're going to sing bossa nova, you have to go to its birthplace. You have to go to Rio de Janeiro and feel the energy of Antonio Carlos Jobim and record with some of the finest bossa nova players in the world. And so that's how I ended up on this amazing journey. Some quiet stars, quiet chords from my guitar Floating on the silence that surrounds us So the lead track on the album is called Quiet Nights and it is one of the most magical songs of Antonio Carlos Jobim, of course recorded um, in the 60s by Frank Sinatra. And I absolutely love the song. I, I feel like it's a song I was born to sing. It's about the magic of two souls being entwined, being in love on a sultry, dark evening together. And the connection is so strong that they realize they want to be in this kind of communion for the rest of their lives. And so, um, yeah, Quiet Nights is a song I absolutely love. When I began the process of thinking about what I wanted to do with this album, I, I met Moogie and I knew he was my producer. I absolutely knew he was the producer I was always meant to work with. Bossa Nova makes you feel good, right? Yeah. You listen to Bossa Nova regardless and you've, you have this, this feel good vibe. Yeah. It helps when you're in love, it, it helps when you lost the love, it helps in, you know, for just about anything. So we began um, having these meetings at his home and talking about making this album and going to Rio. And I started to think about the songs and what I wanted to sing about. And um, obviously my first thing, I really wanted to sing some of the gorgeous songs of Antonio Carlos Jobim because I find them so romantic and 
you know, magical. Then I started to think, well, taking that theme, I think I would like to create an album with full of love songs. All the shades of love is what I told Moogie. I wanted to go on a journey of love and experience the different shades in my lifetime that I had experienced. When I actually said Shades of Love, Moogie said, that's a great title. And originally it was going to be an album, all songs of Antonio Carlos Jobim or traditional bossa nova songs. And Moogie said, but you were formerly a rock singer, British, I believe. So let us choose songs that really represent your roots and we'll turn them into bossa novas. And that's how we came up with this amazing set of 12 songs. There are these visions you see of Rio de Janeiro, all the beautiful rock formations and the oceans. And I had all this kind of romantic feeling about that period. It seemed like some kind of fantasy for me to go there. I don't know if I had a past life in Rio, but I, I have this soul connection. I, they tied this onto me in Rio de Janeiro, and it's been there for a year, and it's never come off. So it was very emotional, you know. I had been singing these beautiful Brazilian songs, Bossa Nova, for a couple of years. And we went through Copacabana and Ipanema, and all the amazing places, these beautiful songs were written. So very moving for me to arrive in Rio de Janeiro. And um, I was just so happy. It was like, like I was so excited, like a calling, like something I was always meant to experience. So my journey to Rio de Janeiro was a very happy one. And my producer, Mugi Carnazio, he came and he, he sat next to me and he said, so, you are in Rio de Janeiro, the home of Bossa Nova. He said, you can't record Bossa Nova anywhere else. You have to come here. You have to be infused with all the energy um, that and all the spirits of Bossa Nova. And he said, uh, it was very funny. He said, I bring you here. And it's like you go through the flame. And if you burn up and you don't survive, you weren't meant to sing Bossa Nova. But if you come through the flame like a phoenix and you do this journey and you rise, then you are meant to sing Bossa Nova. So when we went into the studio, we were joined by um, the most incredible ensemble of players who um, we were going to track all the, the, the tracks live just with uh, bass, drum, guitar, and um, keyboards. And then we were gonna overdub afterwards. So I was joined in the studio by Te Quattro Mariano. He is a very famous um, guitarist in Brazil, probably the top. I've long had a love affair with the instrument of guitar, the, uh, the singer and the guitarist who are very connected. So to meet Te Quattro and hear him play these beautiful bossa nova songs and with this soulfulness and this gentleness and these rhythms and then you you know you put a drama like Felipe Alves who's this amazing rhythmic you know this this sultry samba rhythm that goes underneath bossa nova and then you add you know Paolo Calazan on keyboards and so we had Andre Vasconcelos on uh, bass and, you know, with Mugi at the helm, the way he's, you know, mixing the sound and he's guiding these musicians to get the best performance he possibly can out of them. And he, he, he loves to allow musicians to be pretty spontaneous, but it is truly one of the great experiences in life. To sing with musicians like that is really the finest that Mugi could find in all the land. They were, you know, the, the dream team. They're like the wrecking crew of Rio de Janeiro. With lovers and friends, I still can recall. As Mugi said, I began to infuse and feel the energy of this music and be, become part of it, you know, and um, that was a huge gift. That was just one of those magical journeys that every woman should do, every woman should uh, 
spend some time in Rio in a beautiful dress and, and listen to some bossa nova. <laughs> Who knows, maybe have a love affair. <laughs> compares with you and these memories lose their meaning when I think You know, of Loogie had the idea that I would choose songs from my rock roots and so I love Chrissy Hines and I love The Pretenders and um, I'm a big fan and I love I'll Stand By You. It's such a, a beautiful song and I think in these times where everything is so difficult I think we all need someone right now to stand by us so I think it's a song that's really perfect for the moment and it's about being prepared to really stand with someone through the highs and the lows. In the end, the songs basically um, were the ones that tra we found translated most beautifully, melodically, into bossa nova and also um, sat well with my voice. Um, Mugi lowered my voice um, and pitched me pretty low um, on the album. That was actually John, my partner's idea. But to create that very sultry quality, so I'd never sung that low before, so I had to really get used to singing a little lower, And um, but now I've found I really like it. It's kind of sexy. And so from there, we, we began this journey, and um, you know, he helped me learn to really soften my voice and really get behind the lyric and um, really um, deliver very intimate vocals. And we found this very velvety timber in my voice that we really loved and you know now that's the way I sing. <laughs> I don't sing like a rocker anymore and um, you know so it was a really lovely journey you know the the arc of all the shades of love. Bossa Nova it's like uh, this intimate it's like a whisper singing to your lover or singing to someone who's close to you and so that was the weaving that was the tapestry of the album. Even if you're wrong. So Seven Lives has, has this uh, beautifully romantic story to it. It was written by Zericado, who is a friend of Mugi's, and he wrote it for his wife. Going home, he realized it was their seventh anniversary, and he realized he didn't have money for flowers. So he sat on the side of the street and he penned this beautiful song, Seven Lives, which talks about the seven moments, the seven years, the, the prayers, the moments at dawn, and it's, you know, the flesh and the tapestry of all the beautiful images one might have during, during a very enriching love story. So it's incredibly romantic, and my partner and I, John, who encouraged me to sing Bossa Nova, Brazilian jazz, it was his idea. He felt my voice was right for it. I recorded it as a thank you to him and um, we've had seven years together this year so it's my way of saying thank you for these beautiful seven years. Just to have you near all my seven lives just to hold you here. That was right on. And Mookie, right on. as a producer, he's all about getting behind the lyric and really singing the lyric with the feeling and with a connection to a story, a personal story. And uh, he's pretty clear, if you show up and you're not, you're not behind the lyric and not feeling it, he'll say, oh, we go have coffee today. <laughs> so Wave is my all-time favorite bossa nova song. I am so in love with that song, and it is, of course, this wonderful romantic love song. And the story behind the song, it's about riding the romantic wave and not fighting it. Close your eyes, for that's a lovely way to be. Aware of things your heart alone was meant to see. You see, it's all about surrendering to the wave and not fighting it. That's the idea of the song. We've all got to learn to do that in life. Wave by Antonio Carlos Chauvin. That song, to me, it smells of Rio. I recorded it with Daniel Jobim. He sung it with me as a featured artist. We sung it as a duet. 
and um, he actually played his grandfather's um, piano solo. I particularly love the line that says, don't fight the moon and the stars above, you know? Because why would you fight the moon and the stars above? Why would you fight love? Loneliness goes whenever two can dream a dream together. You can't deny. Don't try to fight the rising sea. My Sherry Amour is like uh, the girl from Ipanema. It's an unrequited love story. It's actually the very same love story. I went to see um, Stevie Wonder in concert and um, I was with Moogie and I said, Moogie, we have to record this as a bossa nova. And he was like, we do it. It was the first song on the album we chose. I, I think we both knew it would make a beautiful bossa nova. I love the word, my Chevy Amour, my Chevy Amour, you know, French, romantic, like Brazilians. <laughs> You're the only one my heart beats for. So In My Life is a Beatles song, and um, it's a song that profoundly connects me to my roots in the UK. Obviously, the Beatles are like, uh, you know, like the gods. It was a little intimidating singing that song because I couldn't find an authentic place to feel into it from. And then one day I sang it to my friend. He was in hospital and I was on video phone and um, I sang it to him and it was very moving. It was very emotional. And, and um, then I kind of, I, I found the way to sing the song. So when I recorded it, I sang it to David to my friend who's now passed over but when I sing it it reminds me of all the little streets that I grew up in and the people and you know my father passed over this year so it reminds me of times gone by you know but how things can feel so fresh when you um, are in in love again you know and and the people that we'll remember forever you know that song's that's about that song but of all these friends and lovers, there is no one compares with you. And these memories lose their meaning when I think of love as something new. Though I know I'll never lose affection for people and things that went before. <laughs> I know I'll sing that song without thinking of David. There is no fire without a spark, right? Here we go. Let's give it a go. So I figured I should sing a song which was a little closer to my roots in rock and roll to start with. So I sung the Amy Winehouse song to start with. And Moogie said, are you sure? Because he felt that was one of the toughest songs on the album. Are you sure you want to do this first? I said, oh, yes, Moogie. <laughs> yes, sniff me out like I was Tanqueray. You're my fella, my guy Hear me a Stella and fly By the time I'm out the door You tear man down like Roger Moore It was amazing. You nailed it. You got really? the whole spirit. Yeah, very cool. Anything you want me to give you more of? Or? Oh, if you give anything more to me, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Solitude or Triste. Another song by Antonio Carlos Jobim, such an elegant song. And um, it's about fantasy love. And um, this song is about falling in love with someone who's out of reach, who just comes through every so often like an aeroplane and makes your heart skip a beat. No one ever can live on a dream that never can be. This Girl's In Love With You has to be one of the most beautiful songs ever written. It was written by Burt Bacharach and um, it was actually the last song we chose. I said to Mugi, oh, I think we have too many songs that are blue. That are, I, I want another song that's really romantic. So he went, hmm, let me think. And he played that song and I was like, wow, let's do it. 
Yes, I'm in love. Who looks at you the way I do? Quiet Nights is about. Uh, it's a, a very, very romantic evening. Um, an evening that is so heart connected with someone you love. In the quietness, you find eternity. You find that you really wish to spend the rest of your life with this person. So close to me until the final flicker of life's ember. The meaning of existence The meaning of existence Oh my love My love Oh my love Aren't the words beautiful? I mean, how many of us fight what's good for us? You know? We're always fighting, we're always in resistance. No, go with the wave of love. I think this should be an anthem for this time. You know, we need, in all this sadness and toughness that has happened in the world, I think we need more love, traditional romance. I think we, we need to slow it down. Maybe that's the beautiful thing that's come out of this uh, quarantine period. We need to slow it down and uh, have these heart connections that um, shape our lives. And they say before you die, you just remember the people you love. <laughs> Not necessarily all the achievements you've made. So that's why I wanted to create an album called Shades of Love. Cause you're my fella, my guy. Help me a Stella and fly by the time. The more I see you, the more I want you. Somehow this feeling just grows and grows. With every sigh, I become more mad about you, more lost without you. And so it goes. Can you imagine how much I love you? The more I see you as years go by.